Chapter 12 of Famous Men of the Middle Ages. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Alec Datesman. Famous Men of the Middle Ages by John H. Harin and A. B. Poland. Chapter 12 Harun al Rashid. Caliph from 789 to 809 A.D. 1. The most celebrated of all Mohammedan caliphs was Harun al-Rashid, which means, in English, Aaron the Just. Harun is also the hero of several of the stories of the Arabian Nights, a famous book which perhaps you have read. There are many curious and wonderful tales in it. When Harun was only eighteen years old, he showed such courage and skill as a soldier that his father, who was then caliph, allowed him to lead an army against the enemies of the Mohammedans, and he won many great victories. He afterwards commanded an army of ninety-five thousand Arabs and Persians sent by his father to invade the Eastern Roman Empire, which was then ruled by the Empress Irene. After defeating Irene's famous general Nicotas, Harun marched his army to Chrysopolis, now Scutari, on the Asiatic coast, opposite Constantinople. He encamped on the heights, in full view of the Roman capital. The empress saw that the city would certainly be taken by the Muslims. She therefore sent ambassadors to Harun to arrange terms, but he sternly refused to agree to anything except immediate surrender. Then one of the ambassadors said, The empress has heard much of your ability as a general. Though you are her enemy, she admires you as a soldier. These flattering words were pleasing to Harun. He walked to and fro in front of his tent, and then spoke again to the ambassadors. Tell the empress, he said, that I will spare Constantinople if she will pay me seventy thousand pieces of gold as a yearly tribute. If the tribute be regularly paid, Constantinople shall not be harmed by any Muslim force. The Empress had to agree to these terms. She paid the first year's tribute, and soon the great Muslim army set out on its homeward march. When Harun was not quite twenty-one years old, he became the Caliph. He began his reign by appointing very able ministers, who carried on the work of the government so well that they greatly improved the condition of the people. Harun built a palace in Baghdad, far grander and more beautiful than that of any caliph before him. Here he established his court, and lived in great splendor, attended by hundreds of courtiers and slaves. He was very anxious that his people should be treated justly by the officers of the government, and he was determined to find out whether any had reason to complain. So he sometimes disguised himself at night, and went all through the streets and bazaars, listening to the talk of those whom he had met and asking them questions. In this way he learned whether the people were contented and happy, or not. In those times Baghdad in the east, and the Mohammedan cities of Spain in the west, were famed for their schools and learned men. Arabian teachers first introduced into Western Europe both algebra and the figures which we use in arithmetic. It is for this reason that we call these figures the Arabic numerals. Harun al-Rashid gave great encouragement to learning. He was a scholar and poet himself, and whenever he heard of learned men in his own kingdom, or in neighboring countries, he invited them to his court, and treated them with respect. The name of Harun, therefore, became known throughout the world. It is said that a correspondence took place between him and Charlemagne, and that, as you have learned, Harun sent the great emperor a present of a clock and an elephant. The tribute of gold that the Empress Irene agreed to pay Harun was sent regularly for many years. It was always received at Baghdad with great ceremony. The day on which it arrived was made a holiday. The Roman soldiers who came with it entered the gates in procession. Muslim troops also took part in the parade. When the gold had been delivered at the palace, the Roman soldiers were hospitably entertained, and were escorted to the main gate of the city when they set out on their journey back to Constantinople. 2. In 802, Nicephorus usurped the throne of the Eastern Empire. He sent ambassadors with a letter to Harun to tell him that the tribute would no longer be paid. The letter contained these words. The weak and faint-hearted Irene submitted to pay you tribute. She ought to have made you pay tribute to her. Return to me all that she paid you, else the matter must be settled by the sword. As soon as Harun had read these words, the ambassadors threw a bundle of swords at his feet. The caliph smiled, and drawing his own sword, or scimitar, he cut the Roman swords in two with one stroke without injuring the blade or even turning the edge of his weapon. Then he dictated a letter to Nicephorus, in which he said, Harun al-Rashid, commander of the faithful, to Nicephorus, the Roman dog, I have read thy letter, 
Thou shalt not hear, thou shalt see my reply. Harun was as good as his word. He started that day with a large army to punish the emperor. As soon as he reached Roman territory, he ravaged the country, and took possession of everything valuable that he found. He laid siege to Heraclea, a city on the shores of the Black Sea, and in a week forced it to surrender. Then he sacked the place. Nicephorus was now forced to agree to pay the tribute. Scarcely, however, had the caliph reached his palace in Baghdad, when the emperor again refused to pay. Harun, consequently, advanced into the Roman province of Phrygia, in Asia Minor, with an army of fifteen thousand men. Nicephorus marched against him with one hundred and twenty-five thousand men. In the battle which followed, the emperor was wounded, and forty thousand of his men were killed. After this defeat, Nicephorus again promised payment of the tribute, but again failed to keep his promise. Harun now vowed that he would kill the emperor if he should ever lay hands upon him. But as he was getting ready to march once more into the Roman provinces, a revolt broke out in one of the cities of his own kingdom, and while on his way to suppress it, the great caliph died of an illness which had long given him trouble. End of chapter 12 Recorded by Halleck Datesman, Brooklyn, New York